Hello everybody, I'm George from Ireland and here behind me is a Wimbledon Lawn Tennis Club. So it's in Wimbledon, London, perhaps the most famous tennis club in the world. It's got up to 600 members, some of whom are social members, some of who are outstanding tennis players, a few honorary members and so on. So it's founded in 1868 and has had the um, present site almost from the beginning. And uh, it, was, it was also a, um, a croquet club and croquet was much more popular originally and tennis was, was something of a, uh, a backwater even for the club. And its original name of, of lawn tennis as we know it was Svaristke, if I pronounce that correctly. That's opposed to real tennis. Real tennis, which goes back to the early Middle Ages, was founded in France. Tennis taking its name from the French word tene, as, as in hold, because you hold the racket. And there are only about 20 real tennis courts in the world. Real is actually um, a bastardization of royal. One of them's at Oxford University. And like, if you ever read um, uh, Henry V um, by Will I Am Shakespeare, and in it, the, the Dauphin, he sends tennis balls to mock Henry V saying, I heard you're thinking of conquering France. You'd be better to match your rackets to these, play tennis. But anyway, and, and, and Henry V retorts that we'll turn these to gunstones and um, we'll mock down your castle walls and many a French mother will curse you for having provoked me because we're going to war against you. But anyway, back to tennis. So um, the, the rules were only written down in the 1860s. We've been modified slightly since. Um, so here it is. We'll go, we'll go in a little bit closer. It's got 18 um, uh, lawn courts. It's got, I think, six American clay courts. It's got a few indoor tennis courts and um, so on. So it's uh, purple and green are its colours. It had originally different colours, but they were the same colours as the Royal Marines, so they changed them slightly. Um, and the centre court is the most famous one, um, and there's, I think, number one court, which can um, seat 1,500, sorry, 11,500 people. The other courts can seat rather fewer people. So, I mean, it's open all year, but very little is going on there most of the time. The weather's um, rather inclement. You can see a scowling sky um, brooding over us but it has not quite um, bruised into rainfall yet. So you can go to the indoor ones. And it, it's the end of June, people go crazy for this. That's when um, that Wimbledon competition is going since 1877, men's and ladies. And originally, women used to wear ankle length um, skirts and obviously long sleeves, um, big hats to shade them in the sun with a parasol playing in a very genteel manner. It was completely changed now. Um, so they have very little in by way of dress code. One thing is, they do specify that all players, men and women, must wear white. And obviously one of the um, growing uh, controversies is should um, men who proclaim themselves to be female be permitted to play in the women's side or vice versa. But um, so far I don't think that's happened. It was cancelled in 2020, consequent upon coronavirus. Uh, the only time that's ever happened, I think even the First World War, Second World War, it went ahead. But um, that they could easily have played which is without spectators because it's the most socially distant sport you're often 20 meters from your opponent i'm no tennis player scarcely ever played you know completely mal coordinated so this is it in the middle of this lovely upper middle class suburb of wimbledon um just trying to think i remember who was it pete sampras was um very successful in the 80s or andre agassi an um, armenian american his surname should be agassian just trying to think, um, who was that German guy in the 80s, 17, became um, incredibly successful? Boris something or other, the surname will come to me. Uh, Martina Navratilova, Czech-American, uh, who was a huge uh, success in the 1980s, came out as a lesbian when that was a highly unusual thing. And she's one of the says that um, so-called trans women should not be permitted to compete in the women's category, uh, and so forth. Um, is it, and I don't really know who's big in it now. Well, Andy Murray was a British champion for a while. So her um, Royal Highness, the Princess of Wales, she is patron of the club. Um, her late Britannic Majesty Elizabeth II was patron for a long time. But in 2016, she handed over to her granddaughter-in-law. So royalty often come and, uh, and play here. Um, what else? There is, there is a young Wimbledon competition as well. Is there anything else that, that you would want to know about it? So buy your tickets early. Although I'm really not a tennis fan. Um, I, I would like to go and watch just once, you know. It's on the bucket list. Um, what else about Wimbledon? So it's quite a walk from Wimbledon Station, like 20 minutes up the hill. It's probably a bit closer to Wimbledon Park Station. But um, it, it's, it's rammed with traffic around here um, when the competition's actually on. Um, but you've had a very difficult to find a parking space. I'm told players get here like a couple of hours early. 
I remember someone was staying in a hotel in Waterloo um, uh, last year. So what else about um, this Wimbledon tennis uh, competition? Obviously it's a knockout competition and some people are seeded or not. You don't want two of the most outstanding players to be in the first round and, and one eliminates the other. So often you'll be against um, a real no hoper. But then obviously there are always a few upsets. Somebody who's thought to stand no chance but actually knocks out a previous uh, world champion. So that's on for about a fortnight in, in, in um, late um, June. So. And obviously you can train in, the, train in the tennis academy, so it's a fairly popular sport. For quite a long time, even though the United Kingdom constantly hosted it, it wasn't very good at it. So largely seen as a summer sport. I think the United States and Australia, France are big at this because the big four in tennis are the French Open, the um, United States Open, the Australian Open and Wimbledon. And they're all at different times of year. And um, whereas I think in the United States they always play in hard courts, not here. So there we are. Um, so there's Wimbledon Station, quite a long way. You're better off coming from Wind Wimbledon Park Station, like that. Um, and then that's, that's Wimbledon Park beyond with a big pond in it. This is where we want this club here, okay? So several courts around there. Um, anyway, what else would, might you want to know about, uh, about um, this place, this competition? So are you going to enter? Um, I'm not sure you have to actually pay to enter. I don't think you can get back under any circumstances. There is some prize money. But the main thing is you're going to get all these sponsorship deals um, if you, if you uh, win. But they're not allowed to wear logos and stuff like that in this competition. I think there are other competitions where they are. And Okay, so that is the back of one of the courts. I'm not sure if it's centre court um, or whatever. And obviously the one that I think is going to um, attract most media interest is right in the, in the, in the centre. And who was that American guy, John McEnroe, was he in the 70s and early 80s, who was notorious for um, uh, arguing the toss with the umpire. Is that the right word? You can't be serious. And that became his autobiography. So they're very slim people. But um, just think of, of, of Andy Murray, who was notoriously melancholic and um, saturnine. Um, so really wasn't a bubbly personality, but got to hand it to him for, for authenticity. So he'd been playing since it was knee-high to the grasshopper, to a grasshopper. A guy from Dunblane, Scotland. He was in this school when there was a massacre. This crazed gunman, Thomas Hamilton, burst in and shot dead lots of school children in 1996 when he was little. It was the end. Um, he was one of those. He was not in the class that was targeted. But he went through that trauma early in life, but it, he didn't let it hold him back. And he is not a political figure at all. But he did, he did come down on the side of Scottish separation in the 2014 referendum, saying, let's do this. That was his one um, intervention. Okay, so you can see we've got the extension to, to Wimbledon Tennis Club, but the main action goes on on the, over, on the other side. So you get an idea of the scale of the place. It's surely the biggest tennis complex in the world. This tennis village in Cork, and there was a tennis center in Moscow uh, in the Barvika area. But yeah, so this is really the world capital of tennis. Um, anyway, anything else you want to know about Wimbledon? I suppose not. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching my, watching my channel. Make sure you subscribe on Patreon and donate with enormous generosity on PayPal to georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. Okay, so goodbye from, yes, Wimbledon Tennis Club in Wimbledon, United Kingdom. Toodaloo.